This presentation is called, What is Group Selection? And the discussion of group selection really takes off in the 1960s when there was a strong reaction against group selection that gave rise to what's known as a neo-Darwinian position. And this was articulated most fully by an evolutionary biologist named George Williams in a 1966 book called Adaptation and Natural Selection. And among other things, in this book, Williams developed an extensive critique of group selection that came to define the very meaning of Neo-Darwinian. So what is the Neo-Darwinian position? We'll discuss this more in a different presentation. But for now, in Williams' terms, it centers on what he called genic selection. And what he meant by this is that natural selection acts primarily on the inclusive fitness of individuals. So Williams built on the work of Hamilton and argued that selection operates to favor genes that give advantage to individuals measured in terms of their inclusive fitness. So that's the heart of what's known as a Neo-Darwinian position. But it's impossible to understand the Neo-Darwinian position without looking at the perspective that they were criticizing, which is sometimes called intrademic selection. And a deme is simply a population and the argument behind intrademic selection is that natural selection can act at the level of groups and indeed at the level of entire species so that it makes sense to speak of adaptations that have evolved for the good of the species or for the good of a local population. And a key part of the neo-Darwinian position turns on the rejection of intrademic selection. Now the central target of the criticisms of George Williams and others was the work of this biologist, Vero Kopner Wynne Edwards, and a massive book that he published in 1962 titled Animal Dispersion in Relation to Social Behavior. And right at the heart of Wynn Edwards' work was the argument that different adaptations had evolved in various species of birds and mammals that allowed them to control their population based on responses to increasing density. So to quote Wynn Edwards from a later short precy of this book, Animals are adapted to control their own population densities. And this argument turned on what he called intergroup selection. And it was Wynne Edwards' work then that most effectively defined the meaning of group selection in the latter half of the 20th century. We don't have to use an example from Wynne Edwards because in anthropology, his work was influential quite early, and the most famous application of Wynne Edwards' approach was made by an anthropologist named Roy Rappaport in his research in New Guinea with a people known as the Simbaga Maring. So during the 1960s, Rappaport studied the Simbaga Maring, and he focused particularly on population and whether or not there were any mechanisms to regulate population. And his thesis was that indeed, one could speak of adaptations at the group level that functioned among the Sambaga Maring to regulate population. And there were two key populations of concern. One was the human population and Rappaport argued that cycles of largely ritual warfare operated to adjust the size of territories 
to accommodate shifting levels of local populations among the Simbaga Marine. But there were also pigs that people raised, so they were gardeners uh, who depended on pigs for animal protein. And it turns out that cycles of warfare began when the pig population grew especially onerous in its size, and warfare ended with a slaughter of the pigs and a massive feast. So the basic model that Rappaport developed begins with there being too many pigs. And when the pig population gets too large, a cycle of warfare breaks out. During the warfare, the different local groups push one another around and by its conclusion, their territories have been adjusted based on their numbers and their strength. To conclude the warfare, they have a massive pig feast, which dramatically reduces the pig population. And this is followed then by a period of peace. And during the period of peace, pigs are not consumed in any large numbers, so the pig population grows again. And this leads to another cycle of warfare, and so as Rappaport sought, there was this elaborate ritual complex involving pig populations and human populations. And presumably this was a cultural adaptation that, he, that had evolved to regulate the human and the pig population. In the 1960s, this approach was called neo-functionalism. And functionalism is the argument that cultures are best thought of as integrated wholes, and all of the parts of a culture work together to solve collective problems. So the analogy is to the way that your heart and your lungs and your nervous system function within your body. What was new in neo-functionalism, and this explains why the prefix neo is added, is simply the argument that there was an adaptation involved that presumably reflected biological evolution. And as you might expect from what we've said, neo-Darwinians don't agree with this approach and argue that neo-functionalism is wrong-headed. So at the heart of Wynne Edwards' work and neo-functionalism in anthropology is group selection and what do we mean by group selection? Well, there's two key arguments, and the first is that groups possess the capacity to override the advantage to individuals within them in the interest of the group as a whole. It follows from this that altruism is redefined. Instead of defining altruism as one individual sacrificing for the sake of another, from a group selection perspective, an altruistic act is one that benefits the group as a whole at some reproductive cost to the individual. And the question that neo-Darwinians pose is, can this actually evolve? Now, as it happens, Darwin anticipated group selection, and he's often quoted to this effect, that when two tribes would come into conflict, if one included individuals more willing to sacrifice for the other members of the tribe, then this tribe presumably would prevail over another group filled with more selfish individuals who would not sacrifice for one another. So that seems to be a Darwinian endorsement of when Edwards rather than the Darwinians. But it turns out that Darwin also anticipated the key weakness in the group selection position. And he notes that it's extremely doubtful whether the offspring of the individuals who are most willing to sacrifice are going to survive in greater numbers than the children of selfish parents who belong to the same tribe. And this is simply because the individuals most willing to sacrifice their lives are often going to leave no offspring, while the more selfish individuals will survive, and more of their offspring will survive.
So this creates this conundrum. Where is selection going to primarily operate? Is it going to be between individuals within groups? And that's the neo-Darwinian position. Or is it going to be between groups themselves or populations? And that's Wynne Edwards' position. So this debate over Wynne Edwards, the basic question it raised is, who is evolution good for? And in time, the arguments over Wynne Edwards' proposals about the self-regulation of animal populations gave way to what's called the units of selection debate. And that's what we'll look at in the next presentation. Thank you for listening.